Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the Crash Moto GP channel and today we are looking at the 10 year comparison between the Moto GP bikes and also we have thrown in some Moto 2, Moto 3, 1, 2, 5 bikes as well. So as you can see on screen, we have the 2011 Ducati versus the 2021 Ducati and straight away you can see the evolution of this bike. I mean it's a completely new model. You see Valentino Rossi breaking for turn two at Valencia and also Paco Bagnaia breaking for the same corner. I mean, just look at the compression on the forks on the 2021 bike. You know, the aerodynamic shape is so different. You know, the, the height of the rear is the, the main thing, as you can notice here. Like, look at the height compared to to this and just the, the aerodynamic shape. You know, it looks so different when you see them side by side and with obviously times change and aerodynamically there's no winglets here at all and I mean even on the front we've got winglets here winglets on the side you know little pockets down here and you've just got just a basic firing you know people do prefer the 2011 and sort of older MotoGP firings because they're so how can you put it? They look like a motorbike. You know, these things look like spaceships and it's just the way things change. But as you can see, <laughs> the bike just looks completely different. Even the livery has changed as well. And the next bike that we have is Honda. So this top bike is the RC212V. So it is the last bike before the current generation of Honda the 213V and there's not much differences of course with Honda you know you notice here the frame is a lot skinnier so it is and the subframes and the chassis is pretty much it, it looks the same obviously it's very different and swing arm wise we've got carbon here we have steel you know it's little things like that but the pretty much the setup of this bike it's still there, you know, it's still got the same sort of exhaust system. Aerodynamically, Honda don't really have as much aero as other teams. We've got the side uh, wing nuts here. Nothing on the front of the 2011 bike. Of course, a livery change as well. And of course, different riders with Danny Petrosa and Mark Marquez. And we can see the scoop as well for a bit of aero. Nothing like that on the 2011 bike. Of course, they just look a lot cleaner, the 2011 bikes. And yeah. What's your thoughts on the livery changes as well? I actually prefer the 2011 bike. I love the black on the Repsol. But I also like this one as well. Which one would you like to see them run in the future? Would you like to see a return of this? Or change this slightly up and keep a similar version? Then we have Moto2. Now, I was thinking about doing this last. But I think we'll get these out of the way. Just for pure interest. You know... Look at the Moto 2. So this is the 2011 Moto 2 that Stefan brought all. This was the first Calyx one in Moto 2. And when you see the latest Calyx, you know, the Remy Gardner Red Bull IO Calyx, completely different. Of course, different engines. It was powered by Honda. This is powered by Triumph. You know, look, look at the arrow changes. You know, this thing hasn't changed too much when you look at the other bikes. I could show you a suitor. Um, in another video and I'd show you the, the big difference that they made but this one you know they look a lot more bigger they're a lot bulkier these these 765s and the Moto2 of 2021 compared to the 600 cc's that we had from 2010 to 2018 but yeah there's not much really to see that's different with this thing I think that there's a lot of similarities you know the the arrow is slightly different I mean, we can't really see it here, but I mean, the air intake is pretty much the same. And yeah, it's interesting to see which way Calyx have went. And you know, they haven't really changed their philosophy that much. And they are the bike to be on a Moto 2, of course. And then we go to perhaps a bigger change. You know, we have a lot of advances here in technology. So this is Nico Tirol, the last ever 125 world champion. And this is Pedro Acosta the current Moto3 world champion. So the last ever one, two, five, two stroke. And then we have the 250 four stroke of the Moto3. So yeah, <laughs> immediately you look at the aerodynamic shape. We've got 
you know, so that velodrome style rear wheel with the arrow. We've got nothing like that in the 125. It's so f slim compared to the Moto 2. The aerodynamic way is a lot more rounder. That's the way they were, I don't know, a lot, lot longer. A very short rear end here. The seat unit. And it's not, it's, it's pretty much like a Moto 2 copy. The Moto 3 is like a mini version, you know, the arrow's really tight. And the, you know, just, just look at the bikes, there's just such a difference, you know, it looks really proper, the Moto 2. And the O2 stroke, it, it, you know, if you weren't on the best bike, so this is the the Aprilia and this was the, the top bike to be on. It's just such a difference when you see them compared side by side. Even the riding position, you know, look how tucked in Acosta is. I know it's not the best photo of Tyrol, but you get a sense for how aerodynamically the Moto 3 works, you know, because it's so equal. You know, that airflow will need to go right over, and he's tucked in as far as he could. But with this, it was pretty much about if you're on the best bike, you could really you know, have a an advantage over someone on the grid if, when they all weren't on the same bikes, you know. So that's Moto 2, or Moto 3 and 125 done. And now we have Suzuki. Now, personally, I love both liveries, but I love the Rizla 2011. Now, what a stunning bike this is. Of course, engine characteristic changes with the Suzuki. They were V4, and then they went inline. And, yeah, this is their last bike before their return in 2015. And, if you can see the aerodynamic, of course, the winglets two exhausts at the back they went for like a honda sort of style in 2011 you know that's why most people kind of ran it and yeah it just looks completely different so it does i love the just the, the look of this bike it looks so aggressive but i also love this bike as well you know little things as well like mir has these little grips like the aero add-ons and for him to be comfortable in the tank obviously none of that on batista's that we can't really see but the, just the, the bike looks completely different of course, you would expect that 10 years on, you know, I think the Suzuki have changed a lot in their philosophy. And compared to the last bike that we have, which is the Yamaha. Now, here is an interesting one for me. Personally, I love this, this livery. I love the factory colours. Well, Yamaha actually couldn't get a sponsor. Uh, I mean, title sponsor, so they run factory colours. You see Jorge Lorenzo, Fabio Quattararo. Yamaha haven't changed that much in terms of, you know, you see the DNA, it's a bit like Honda. You see the DNA of the machine, you know, the front end, our intakes are pretty much the same. We just have aerodynamics that you see here, you know, the, the winglets. And yeah, the, the, it looks like the, the, the shapes here, they're all kind of the same, you can see that. Of course, we've got the small slice cut exhaust on the side. And they used to run the longer exhaust. They stopped using that around midway through 2014 to go for the slice cut. And then fully carbon swing arm. Steel swing arm here. So yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Rear end, a bit more skinnier, a bit more boxy. But the DNA for the Yamaha, you can see a lot of it in today's bike. And it's just interesting to compare these bikes, you know, I think that technology's came a long way in 10 years, but we will see a lot of changes in the next five, you know, especially in 2022, we've seen a big change already with a lot of teams and their aerodynamics. So that's all folks for today's video. Make sure to subscribe to Christ Moto GP for more content. What videos would you like to see next? Would you like to see more comparison videos? Would you like to see 500s? to the modern day MotoGP bikes. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.